Um, that leads me nicely, matter of fact. That leads me nicely, Matt, um, into something called front loading. Yeah. And I don't know whether you guys have picked up on this, this word. Yeah. What is front loading? Has anyone um has anyone seen that mentioned in, in articles? Um, front loading rates, front loading interest rates. Yep. Daniel, Daniel has anyone else? Anyone else uh, seen that? Right. Okay. Well, I'll give you a just 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 to uh, just to kind of simplify what 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 they mean by front loading is that so central banks would generally have you know a target in, um, interest rate that they want to or they think um, yeah okay so I'll explain it Alexander so central banks will have a, a potentially have a target so they say by you know the end of 2022 oh gosh sorry one second no, where's my pen tool pen tool pen tool right. Right. So they'll say, you know, by the end of, you know, 2022, right, uh, you know, interest rates should be at somewhere like maybe 3%. Yeah, it's a 3%. And they project that through what's known as, I guess, you know, the Fed call it dot plots, but they typically will have, you know, if, if, if we're what, second quarter right now, Q2, right, and inflation is at, I mean, interest rates are at maybe 1.5%. What they're saying is, is that in the next, you know, two, three meetings, if they have a 3% interest rate target. So what you've got is, is um, you've got their projected um, in, in, interest rate uh, targets that they think, you know, they want to meet by the end of, you know, a certain time period, which they think if, if interest rates can go up that high, then inflation should want to potentially come down, right? So what they'll do is they'll say, okay, so if, if you want to reach, reach somewhere around that 3% target and, you know, the next meeting we have to, if we increase, you know, rates by, you know, uh, 0.05, 0.5, I should say, right? That'll bring us up to 2%. Two, uh, 2%. And then in the next meeting, in the, the, the September meeting, you know, we, we if we do, a, you know, another point, you know, five meeting, 0.5 increase, that would bring us up to, um, you know, point, uh, 2.5. And then if we do another one right at the end of the year, that'll take us up to 3%. And then hopefully by that time, with interest rates being at 3%, inflation should come down. That's basically what it is. But the front loading, what front loading is, is basically increasing interest rates now yeah and then having smaller interest rate hikes later on so what they might do and talking about the FOMC and even the Bank of England um, they might say all right then well let's um, if our target is three percent let's increase by zero seven uh, like a like a shoke uh, I'm not too sure what a shoke is um, but basically they're just trying to increase it now like a shock, like it's shock the oh, market. Oh, shock. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, my friend, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even say, I wouldn't even say shock. It's just, it, while I guess the, 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 the thinking behind it is more to do with, look, if we can, if we can increase rates as much as we can now before a recession comes, <laughs> right? Because we, we may avoid recessions if, 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 we, if we increase rates by more to get to our 3% target in the short term. And then maybe, you know, later on, we can only, we only have to maybe do 0.25 because then let's say, for example, the, the second quarter Q, let's say Q3 data comes out, right? And Q3 data comes out and then it's, you know, it's a it's GDP growth is at like 0.1% and that's, you know, coming down from maybe, you know, 0.5%. Let's just say, right, just use these random numbers. Yeah. At least then, if there's disappointing GDP numbers, they're not hiking at 0.5%, which could then tip that number into a recession. They're, because, they've, because they've hiked more in Q2, yeah, by Q3, if that if that number does come out as you know being a poor GDP number, they they they're closer to their three percent target, which means that they have room to then just say, all right, maybe we'll do a zero point one five, you know, um, 
uh, uh, interest rate hike. Does that make sense? Because it's harder, it will be harder for them to rate, to hike rates um, at maybe 0.5 with contracting and bad GDP numbers. That makes sense, guys? So that's what front loading is. Yeah, so they're still going to get to their 3% target or 3.5% target or whatever it is. But what they're actually doing is just trying to hike more sooner. And there was evidence of this, in fact, um, you know, back in, when was this? This was in April, right? April 21st this year. So a couple months ago, Powell, yeah, Jerome Powell, uh, chair, head of the, um, the Federal Reserve chairman, right? Powell backs front-loading Fed rate hikes. Yeah, so he backs that. Yeah, the Fed's Bullard says front-loading could lead to rate cuts by 2023. So what he's saying is, is that if you, if you front-load now, yeah, because... I guess if you if if they think a recession is coming by 2023 and the recession does come by 2023, again you you can then start to cut rates because you've got because you've hiked rates so much that you can cut. So, but before I don't really want to get into that now, but just understanding that they kind of support front loading, right? And it, and he says it here, right? So in speech marks quotations, he says. I have also said that we should get to 3.5. So the number's not 3%, it's 3.5 by the end of the year, which is higher than some of my colleagues, Bullard said in a Fox Business uh, interview on Friday. The more we can front load, the more we can get inflation and inflation expectations under control, the better off we will be. In years out, in 2023, 2024, we could be lowering the policy rate because we've got inflation under control. So front loading is just them saying let's oh what's happened there um it's just them saying look we can uh yes it so we can high create it's better to high create sooner and be more aggressive now than later on because later on we could be in a worse place economically which would then really kind of tie our hands uh, so there might be a chance that they might front load seven. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it, Alexandros, right? That's exactly it. So the FOMC meeting, they could actually, and that's and that's why the dollar rallied. If you, if you, I don't know, I can't remember the report or exactly where I read it or someone posted it, but basically there was there was something, there was an expectation somewhere here. So there we go. So basically when CPI came out, last week um you know more than expected that pushed the expectation that there could potentially be a 75 basis point hike does that and that makes sense right that makes all the sense in the world because inflation didn't come down it went higher so they so then the fed have to act more aggressively they have to you know front load right and that's what this pricing was right Oh, is anyone in the, uh, <laughs> is anyone in this, by the way, in the uh, short in the euro? I got in up here. This is a nice, I only got a one position though, which was a bit annoying. Yeah, you, oh, you got in, Daniel. Excellent. 